Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Double Cross. Today, a brand new trailer for the game dropped during Capcom's livestream. And the trailer gave us a look at the second new style, Alchemy Style, which up until now all we've seen of is someone shaking a barrel, but not actually known what it does. So we get the information on that today. We also got to look at some new deviants, a new type of prowler, as well as a new mode that kind of goes hand in hand with your hunter arts. So lots of cool new information, all of which we get to see in the trailer. So I thought I'd do a complete trailer breakdown, talk about everything new that you guys need to know about, whilst also showing you guys the footage. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. Also, just before I get started, apologies for the lack of the Monster Hunter Generations DLC video. I was away last week in LA for PlayStation Experience, so I wasn't there, wasn't able to make the video, so I apologize for that. But by now, I imagine most of you guys have already downloaded the DLC, so you should be good to go. Anyway, let's turn our attention to this trailer. It's super exciting. First thing we see is a look again at one of the two new flagship monsters, because of course for Double Cross, the flagship monsters are this kind of jet black jet type monster. And of course the Diablos, this monster here is called Barofaruku, but it's a little bit kind of annoying to pronounce, but basically it is the jet monster. Its wings are effectively jet engines. It blasts itself into the sky. It will fly away during fights and then you'll see like a red glint in the sky and it will just come bombing back down. So it is very aggressive, very fast by the looks of it. I honestly cannot wait to fight this one. And from some of the gameplay, it does look like it's going to present a kind of good challenge. Because unlike some other monsters, which have some quite obvious tells, this one appears to be able to basically spin around pretty fast, hit you around when you least expect it. So do expect a challenge for this, at least, you know, for the first few times you fight it until you kind of get used to it. And as for your other monster, this is the Deviant Diablos, the kind of angry Diablos. It's got like an official name, but not going to worry about that for the time being. This is just like a very, very aggressive kind of dark blue looking Diablos. It's got a load of cool moves, as you can kind of see in the gameplay. But we've seen this one before. So let's try and move swiftly on to the new stuff. Alchemy. This is the name of the second new style, because of course, so far we've seen the Brave style, which I've done videos on. So if you guys have missed that, then do check that out on the channel. It's a really cool new style, probably the one that I'm most excited for. But Alchemy style is really interesting. It's one of those things that, if I'm completely honest, I don't think people are going to use it as seriously as other styles. Like if you're going to go out there and try and, you know, be as efficient as possible, try and do as much damage as possible, you're probably going to lean more towards Brave or some of the existing styles. Alchemy, in my opinion, is a lot more of a fun style and also a support style. So if you do want to play as a support kind of character, then Alchemy might be for you. But it is also a little bit gimmicky, so I'm not entirely sure just yet quite how much value it will have. Of course, I won't know for sure until I get my hands on it, but that's kind of like my initial thoughts from the gameplay. But what you're basically seeing here is as follows. In Alchemy style, you have a barrel that appears in your item pouch. It doesn't take up a slot, but it is part of the style. It'll be an item you select, and during the fight, it will then charge up, and when it's charged, you're able to use the item. You then begin shaking your barrel, and depending on the number of times you shake it, it gives you access to a different item. You can shake it anywhere from one all the way up to five times, and as mentioned, the more you shake it, the better items you get. And those items can range from things as simple as wet stones or sonic bombs all the way to things like portable earplugs. And what is effectively a rocket launcher, it basically fires a rocket out of the barrel towards the monster. But if you go all the way to the top and you shake it five times, then you get things like a kind of area wide heal that can actually be used to heal like everyone in the vicinity. So think of it kind of like a life powder in that respect or something that actually helps boost the hunter arts for again, everyone in the vicinity. So the gamble with this style is of course trying to find the gaps because if you you know, try and sort of shake your barrel and you get hit by the monster, then of course you're going to, you know, you're going to have wasted your opportunity. But if you do want to get some of the best stuff, you are going to have to find a good opening that'll actually allow you to get, you know, five shakes in as opposed to one. Because let's be honest, there's not really going to be much value in just shaking your barrel once to get a whetstone when you could shake it five times to get a hunter up boost. So there's definitely going to be a fair element of kind of placement trying to work out sort of, you know, when to use it and whatnot. But when you have shaken it, you basically get a menu that appears on your item menu. Not too dissimilar to how, say, bows and bow guns switch between ammos. There'll basically be a scrolling menu above the barrel and you can select the item you want to basically create. It's also worth mentioning that Alchemy Style can have three Hunter Arts. So up until now, that was only Striker Style because of course the other ones have one or two. But Alchemy is now the other style that can have three Hunter Arts. It can also have, interestingly, three SP modes as well, which I'll speak about in just a second because we're getting there very shortly. But this is the only style that can have three SP Hunter Arts as opposed to one. Then next up in the trailer, we get a look at the new type of Prowler. This is called Beast Prowler. And there's basically a move you have access to when you've, of course, you know, accrued enough points. And when you activate it, you basically go into Beast Mode. This looks kind of very similar to that Hunter art that kind of turns the Dual Swords users into like these demons, the kind of crouching demon with the red eyes and whatnot. But when you're in this stance, you get claws. So instead of attacking with the usual kind of stick and the boomerangs, you instead attack with claws. 
and you also have different combos so it's going to be a very aggressive i would imagine very powerful so if you are a prowler player and you do kind of like enjoy playing like this then this is definitely gonna be something for you the other thing worth calling out in this situation is actually not to do with the beast prowler but it's actually to do with the gameplay you're seeing you can of course see Kongalala is back which is another monster from you know previous entries in the series so it's nice to see it back but also we see the kind of old jungle from, say, you know, Freedom Second, Freedom Unites. That's kind of the area that you typically find Kongalala in. And that is indeed back in Double Cross. So new and returning areas. Of course, we do have the new area we've seen, which is like the Ancient Temple and whatnot. But you also have areas like this. Super cool to see. Then moving on from there, the next section takes a look at yet more Deviant Monsters. And this time, Deviant flagship monsters so one of the things we of course know from generations or cross is that the only flagship monster that got a deviant was of course glavinus or dino valdo depending on the version you're playing we've of course got hellblade which was the hyper aggressive very powerful version in double cross it's been amped up a little bit so as is always the way when you get g rank they get a few new moves they're slightly more aggressive and whatnot and that of course applies to hellblade 2 he's gonna be a lot more aggressive a lot harder to deal with in g rank however now the remaining three flagships also get deviants Starting off with Astalos, basically like a blue thunder version. So instead of the usual green lightning, it's got blue. It's got like a much bigger kind of electric blade on its sort of head and whatnot. It fires up blue lightning. And also one of the moves, kind of interesting you see in the gameplay, is it appears to be able to throw out this sort of blue lightning vortex that kind of pulls you back towards it and kind of sort of keeps you there, which is obviously going to be very dangerous because it then means you're a sitting duck for it to basically dive into your back. You then have what I'm basically going to call the kind of ice trunk gamoth, which is... A deviant version of Gamoth, it's got kind of like white and blue markings as opposed to the kind of red and blue from before. It's got spiky ice all the way down its trunk, spiky ice on its legs. And this one's much more about using ice as a move as opposed to snow. So that's of course going to have a lot more effect with regards to, you know, slowing you down. If you get caught in it and whatnot, then it's probably going to be a lot more aggressive, maybe even a lot faster. Who knows? Either way, looks pretty cool, looks pretty angry. And then the final option is Mizutsune or Tamutsune. And this one is an interesting one. Apparently it's had its eyes gouged out. So as a result of it not being able to see, its other abilities are heightened. So it'll use more bubbles, you know, use more effects like that. It also has some new bubbles, some blue ones. Not entirely sure what they do just yet, but that's something that's been added to its arsenal. So new deviants for all the flagships. So now for those of you guys that, you know, like have a favorite flagship and you kind of hoped for some deviant gear from them, there will of course be accompanying armor sets for those. Then, of course, after that, the trailer moves over to the kind of Hunter's Hub, which is where you'll, of course, go online to do your G-Rank stuff. This is the G-Rank Hub as opposed to the conventional one. Up on the hot air balloon, we, of course, see, you know, different NPCs, different characters together. But this now leads back onto something I spoke about earlier in the video, and that is SP mode. Now, this is a new mechanic that basically goes hand in hand with your Hunter Arts. What you're able to do in Double Cross is designate one of your Hunter Arts to be your SP Art. Now, if you're using something like... Adept or Aerial, then of course you're only going to have one art, but if you're using something like Striker or Guild, you're going to have to pick one of your arts to be your SP art. And what this basically means, it's like a superpower thing, is that when you activate the Hunter art that is also designated as an SP art, it powers up everyone in the vicinity, and the effect of the power up depends on the style that you're playing as. So let's say, for example, that you are a Sword and Shield user, you have Round Force, and you designate Round Force as your SP. When you use Round Force, it'll still behave as it always has done, but you'll also simultaneously buff yourself and everyone else in the vicinity. So to give you guys some context, Guild Style will basically give you a buff that makes it so that you can consume items faster or some items faster, so faster eating, faster drinking of potions, things like that. Striker Style, if you use SP, then your art gauges will increase gradually, even if you're out of combat. So as it currently exists in game, you only generate Hunter Art Gauge if you're attacking or you're hit. Whereas with this applied, when you're in SP mode, then you'll be able to kind of like just gradually gain Hunter Art Gauge. For Aerial, your jump and stamina loss will be decreased when you're, you know, of course, vaulting and whatnot. For Adept, you'll have a bigger window, an even bigger window, to do your Adept Guard and Evades, which is kind of ridiculous given how easy it is already. So that's probably going to be a little bit broken, a little bit easy. As for Brave, it increases the rate at which your Brave Gauge charges, which is going to be very nice because obviously you're going to want to stay in Brave mode as much as possible. For the new Alchemy style you get faster gauge increases so that you can shake your barrel more frequently. It is also worth mentioning, while on the topic of alchemy, alchemy is the only style that can have three SP arts. So while every other style, Striker, Guild, Aerial, Brave, and Bushido, all of them can only select one art to be an SP, alchemy can have all three. So for alchemy, anytime you're using an art, you're already pushing out buffs. But of course, that's going to be a little bit limited given that the buff from Alchemy is only going to kind of increase the barrel shape. So I guess in that respect, it's kind of useless unless you've got other barrel users in your team. 
And then finally, the Prowlers also, they can benefit from this as well. They will basically have a reduced cost of their skill consumptions. Now, interestingly, I'm not entirely sure whether the effect that you get from SP is based on the style that you have or the style that you are using when you issue it. And what I mean by that is, if you are a striker and you then use SP, does it give everybody the striker style buff, I gauge increase, you know, gradually? Or does it give people a buff relevant to their particular style? So if you're a striker user and you use SP, would you buff an aerial user in their appropriate way? That bit I'm not too sure about, and I'll try and find out. And once I do know, I will, of course, clarify for you guys. But either way, SP is a new way to kind of like buff up your hunter arts, kind of as a means to sort of help you deal with G rank. And it effectively means that you can sort of power up yourself and your team whilst using your arts. Really cool stuff. Of course, you know, encourages team play and whatnot. But even if you're playing solo, you can still buff yourself. You can still benefit from this. But that is still super cool. And just in case it wasn't super clear, that is of course denoted in the gameplay by this kind of like cross flash every single time someone activates a hunter art, that is effectively SP triggering. We then get a quick look at what I'm going to assume is just a brand new move for Prowlers, kind of like the uh, sort of Prowler tank from before, but this time there is like a Prowler cannon, so they jump in, fire themselves at the monster, and looks pretty cool. I guess you can kind of do a mount from that, um, and of course they synchronize it in the video, so that's kind of cool, and it's also nice to see the uh, Congolala Prowler gear, that is something that looks super awesome. Then finally, this last thing in the trailer. Truth be told, I'm not 100% sure what this is yet. However, the hunter performs the new gesture that was added in Generations. And shortly after that, a Prowler Acorn Rocket just flies down with a shiny item in, which I'm assuming is an item that you can benefit from. Now, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say this could well be similar to how you can wave at a balloon and it tells you the location of a monster. Perhaps if you see, maybe there'll be something new floating in the sky. Maybe there'll be like a cat balloon or something if you then perform that gesture at that time perhaps a cat rocket flies down drops an item and you can then collect from it it could be that or it could just be coincidental they could have just done a gesture and the cat rocket comes down who knows honestly i don't right now but that is kind of like my guess so that's pretty much it that was the trailer that is the gameplay and that is kind of what you guys need to know for the time being if you guys have any questions by all means let me know in the comments down below drop a like if you did enjoy the video and thanks for watching take it easy catch you next time peace out